Dear friends, welcome to Core Basics Coding Tutorial. I hope you are having great time learning multiprocessing in Python. In this tutorial, we are going to cover one very interesting topic called lock. Now, if you have taken any computer science classes or any operating system class, you, you have already learned about lock. Lock is a very important concept when it comes to multiprocessing and operating system concepts. Okay, so let's go over uh, this lock concept. Uh, first of all, let's think about why lock is needed in our real life. In our day-to-day -day life, there are resources which cannot be accessed by two people at the same time. For example, bathroom. Okay, bathroom door have a lock why because if two people try to access it at the same time it's really gonna create a pretty embarrassing situation isn't it so that's why we protect the bathroom which is a shared a shared resource with a lock similarly in programming world whenever two processes or threads are trying to access a shared resource such as a memory shared memory a file or a database uh, it can create a problem so you need to protect that access with a lock what happens if you don't add that protection I'm going to show that by uh, running this code so this program is a banking software program and here I have two processes you can see them here the first process is depositing money into a bank and the second process is withdrawing money from the bank and in the end I am printing the final balance okay so I'm starting with a $200 balance in deposit section I'm depositing $100 so I have a for loop which iterates through 100 times and in each iteration it will add $1 to my bank account and similarly in the withdrawal I have same loop which I trust 200 times and every time it will deduct $1 for my, from my bank account. So in the end I should have $200 left here. Okay. Now I'm using a shared memory variable called value. So if you remember from my previous tutorial this multiprocessing value is a shared memory resource let's see what happens when you try to run this program okay it printed $200 fine so sometimes it will work but sometimes it will print inconsistent results so I'm going to run it multiple times this time it printed 205 201 so you can see that every time it's just printing different values now why does this happen this happens primarily because when this process tries to read this variable called balance dot value which is in shared memory let's say this has a $200 value it will read it and then it will add one and then it will put back the same thing into a same variable so let's say this is 200 and it is doing this addition operation uh, at operating system level so at operating system level it will be executing multiple assembly line instructions okay so let's say it re read the variable 200 it added one and it's gonna write back 201 here now while it is doing it at the exact same time this instruction also got executed so although I am depositing first and then withdrawing what happened is when I try to read this it will be still 200 because this guy has not written back to the original variable okay so instead of reading this as 201 it will read this as 200 and it will have uh, 199 as a balance dot value instead of 200 so that's why you are getting this inconsistent behavior all right so now let's use lock to lock the access okay so what you're going to do is create a lock variable and use multiprocessing modules lock class this is how you create a lock multiprocessing dot lock okay 
and pass that log to both of these processes okay and now here I am going to say log dot acquire so to put a lock you just call lock dot acquire function and then to release a lock it's a release function so it's pretty intuitive and straightforward okay so lock dot acquire and then lock dot release now this section of code is called critical section whatever part of your code is accessing the shared resource which you want to protect that part is called critical section so you are, are always have to put lock.acquire and lock.release uh, around that critical section okay now let's run it okay so now it's gonna print 200 every time so I'm running it multiple times just to prove that I'm not making this up. It now works. Okay, so the guys who write your banking software, they better, better use lock. Otherwise you will have chaos in your uh, bank account transactions, you know. So yeah, using lock is very, very important. Okay, so that was all about locks. We are going to cover a uh, few more uh, multiprocessing concepts in future tutorials. Multiprocessing, learning multiprocessing with Python is extremely easy and I hope all of you are having great time and I'm pretty confident all of you can learn Python uh, very easily by following these tutorials. So. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.